So this film came out uh, a couple of years ago, twenty end of 2021, I believe. And it's been on my list. I haven't uh, sat down and did an entry for it yet. So I figured while I'm doing, you know, my rundown of uh, older films that I want to do entries for, let's get this one out of the way because it's a pretty interesting discussion, to say the least, um, simply because of the story in and of itself. You know, it's one of these inspired uh, by the tr- by by true stories, by true events. Although, you know, loosely over-dramatized, of course, everyone's kind of expecting that, but we're talking about Gucci here. Like, Gucci is a name that's very well known for people who are very fashion-orientated or, you know, people who love this, the the kind of designer lifestyle in a way, you know, Aldo's, Armani, things like that. Like, Gucci is a is, is almost a household name in that sense. Even just people who don't can't even afford it, they know what Gucci is. So, you have this story... And it's based on a novel, and the novel is also called The House of Gucci, but it's got this longer, more drawn-out name and all that bullshit. But it's written by this um, journalist, Sarah Gay Forden, and all she really is is somebody who used to just journal... Uh, the like the lifestyles of all of these different designer businesses and whatnot. She's done Armani, she's done Gucci, she's done all of these people, and she wrote these memoirs basically because of you know the actual story that happened. And this this is real. And the only reason that I know it's real is because my wife is really into this stuff. She she loves you know fashion and all that. She has uh, her own little fancy bag that she spent way too much money on that I'm comfortable with. But it's her thing. By all means, let it be her thing. And if she likes it, she likes it. Good for her. I went into this just wanting to see this movie that had this tremendous cast with it. You know, you're talking about Adam Driver, Jared Leto, Jeremy Irons, Lady Gaga. You know, she's been knocking everything out of the park. Um, You got Al Pacino. It's just a... and, And it's directed by Ridley Scott. Like... What is the guy who did Blade Runner and Alien doing making the House of Gucci movie? I don't know. And I don't even know if it would have been different if it was directed by somebody else. But being that it's directed by him, it's just, it's still a good movie regardless of the fact. And maybe it's his vision that he gave to it. But I'm digressing because, you know, it just amazes me that this is a Ridley Scott film. Now... It, of course, just tells the story of all of the drama behind the, the Gucci family and, of course, all the, the money and the, uh, the assassinations and all that stuff. It's all, it's all real. This is all stuff you can look up and find that these were actual things that happened. His wife went on trial. The, uh, the, the man who, um, what's his name? Uh, what's the guy's name that's actually the one who sort of took over Gucci? So Gucci was a family business. And then you had the youngest son, I believe it was, I forget his name, and he plays a role in kind of taking over the Gucci business from his family. And his family is, you know, Jeremy Irons plays a member of the family, Jared Leto. The only one who's not a member of the family is uh, Lady Gaga's character, who I believe whose name is um, Patrizia. And Patrizia just kind of comes in and swoons uh, Adam Driver's character and gets involved in the Gucci family that way by marrying him. And so she kind of pushes him into this idea that you can be the owner of all of this and you could run you could run it all. So it's this big kind of drama behind him pushing his family out little by little and being the sole owner of Gucci. And then, of course, that marriage breaks down because it's just... It's what happens in movies. It's a typical sort of movie trope. But it is based on stuff that happens in real life. And this is something that actually did happen. It's ex- I mean, again, over-dramatized for the story. But it's actually what happened. He pushed her out after a while. Got divorced. She got pissed. Paid somebody to assassinate him. And then went on trial for it. And I think she's still in prison now, if I'm not mistaken. I forget exactly what my wife told me. But again, this is me kind of only being in in the background, you know, it's me being in the background of not really being involved in this atmosphere, but seeing something like this play out in this, in this biopic, this sort of uh, mockumentary in a way, and this style of how it told this real story, and just being shocked that like, yeah, I'm watching a movie, but I'm also watching a reenactment, you know, to an extent, of course, but it is still a reenactment of, real shit that happened in this world like you think that like 
something like these designer labels, they don't have really shitty backstories when you're not involved in it. But there are people that deep dive into that stuff and they 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 really know all of the ins and outs because they get invested in what it is that is part of these these labels, these names. You know, they just came out uh, with a trailer for a movie that's coming out soon, Air, which is essentially the Michael Jordan story and how they made, how Nike made Air Jordans based on Michael Jordan to sell shoes. These are stories that really exist, and of course they're going to be over-dramatized, but these are stories that I would love to see and I'd love to hear about. I do a lot of looking into things that kind of catch my interest. Again, Gucci is not something that's going to catch my interest, but this movie... I had to sit down and watch, and I'm not disappointed in it. It really was a good movie start to front, and it just makes it even better that it's still relatively accurate to what really happened in real life. And it was super successful. I think it, like, doubled its um, budget, which was, of course, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. And it's a Ridley Scott film that just was sort of... I think it's his la the last film he did. I don't think he has anything... Um, coming out recently or is going to have anything coming out soon so for it sort of being his most recent film it's a, it's top notch it really is it's something that's really really good uh, to sit through but again it's just not my realm so I can't say too much about it for what like anything else that has to do with more than just the movie and what I know about its backstory I would like to do a little bit more digging into it but again, I saw this movie when it came out, and we're talking that if I did do dig any digging into it, it was back then. So now I don't really care, but it's worth talking about the movie, even though it's a couple of years later. If you haven't seen it, it is still worth it.